welcome to this NPTEL lecture on ultra wideband antennas. While discussing broadband antennas, we said that there are log periodic antennas, spiral antennas etcetera, they are broadband, but they are dispersive in nature. So, a pure pulse of very short duration typically of nanosecond or picosecond duration on time that cannot be passed through and that type of antenna, it will have severe distortion. But today we will see both uh, various types of ultra wide band antennas that can pass that type of pulses and we would not go into the details because these are quite advanced topics, but to have a glimpse of the applications of these antennas and requirements why these antennas are being developed for that today we will have this lecture. So, the first we start with the first slide that what is the definition of ultra wideband actually there is a lot of debate over these and IEEE still now uh, does not come up with the, with the proper definition of ultra wideband, but uh, FCC Federal Communication Commission they have already came up with a uh, correct definition scientific definition of ultra wideband. So, we will see that according to that the a signal is called ultra wideband if the fractional bandwidth is greater than 20 percent. What is meant by fractional bandwidth actually this is the uh, new thing that fractional bandwidth is basically because for ultra wideband signals there is no question of center frequency. So, there is a low frequency of operation, there is a high frequency of operation. So, they are defined as typically 10 dB from the maximum. So, f h is the highest frequency at which 10 dB from the maximum of the signal is there similarly f l. So, it is f h minus f l by f h plus f l by 2. So, that gives it the <coughs> branded definition and alternatively also a ultra wideband signal should have at least the absolute bandwidth should be greater than 500 megahertz. And if we again look at this bandwidth definition please note that we can easily find out that what is the maximum bandwidth that is possible. So, theoretically the maximum will come to be from this one because f h and f l both should be positive frequencies or actually f l should be positive frequency. So, that shows that 200 percent is the maximum that an any signal can have maximum bandwidth. So, an ultra wideband signal its maximum bandwidth is 200 percent. Now, we see that these are typically impulse like signals, but actually they are short pulses of duration few nanoseconds. So, obviously, if they are so short in time they occupy large bandwidth, then these are in communication this uh, UWB uh, you can see that these various applications where these are required. So, this is UWB communication obviously, this type of short pulses they do not go much distances their range is limited. So, uh, initially their range was only some few meters that is why you see all these applications are very close distance things the range is not much, but, but nowadays in consumer electronics mobile device devices and PCs all have U UWB broadband connectivity built in. Typically UWB devices may operate not typically, but uh, excess of 1 Gbps is quite natural nowadays and their range is possibly 50 meters. So, from few meters uh, up to 50 meters people are using it, but they are unmodulated signals directly the pulse is getting transmitted. Obviously, there are lot of attenuation that is why the range is limited, but other UWB communication applications are uh, for wireless sensor networks typically 100 kbps less than that speed. So, monitoring office and residential environment 
then plant monitoring, security monitoring at airports, etc. Then wireless band, body area network, communication between two body worn devices, they are also uh, people are using it. Then for, so for some emergency, uh, emergency purposes like after avalanche, earthquake, if no communication is there to establish communication, this is used. Then communication by fire department and law enforcement agencies, etc. But more than communication, actually this technology has so many other applications. So, UWB technology particularly in the form of radars which are a different kind of radars than the conventional radars. So, UWB technology can be utilized for seeing whether there is any buried unexploded ordinance. Actually, in an war torn country there are many mines etc. kept also sometimes many arms, ammunitions, some IEDs etc. they are kept and later when the war is over that poses problem to civilian people. So, detection of that is a UNO's job. So, mm, this is required for that. Then UWB technology is also used for seeing whether anyone is there behind wall, through wall imaging it is called, anyone behind foliage, whether something is buried inside ice in various uh, uh, mountain warfares these are required. Then in case of you know in our country in winter season whole north India the railway uh, movement gets disturbed because of fog etcetera. So, due within fog uh, or during fog can the rail system or transportation system go unimpeded. UWB technology also is used for highway health checkup, highway inspection, underground utility like water pipes etcetera, what is their health, whether they are leaking, then building whether that is will fall down or not. In mines, the mining industry, mine roof health, whether it is okay or it will fall. UWB technology also is used for subsurface water detection for agriculture. It predicts how much the growth of uh, any crop will be there. So, various lot also lot of industrial uses to find out the crane movement, exact position of the molten stuff. So, lot of lot of uh, things UWB technology is used. Some of the examples I will hurry through. This is buried object detection. Then what I said that this type of mines are there. So, can we detect it by this uh, UWB technology? Then through wall imaging whether someone has uh, taken some hostages. So, people want to see police department want to see from outside who is there inside. Then uh, suppose whether behind any wall someone has kept some uh, uh, rifles or whether some person is thereby. So, suppose this person is behind this wall from the other side of the wall, this image shows that okay, there is a person, then these are all various this uh, rifle. So, it is various pictures. Then there are also that suppose in the space you want to have an inflatable antenna. Nowadays, people are using that that after going to space the antenna will be flown. So, can it have that UWB technology? Then orbital debris, lot of orbital debris are flowing. So, can anyone harm us? So, for that there is a need for detection of that. Then suppose someone is trapped under some avalanche. So, can we detect that whether he is uh, some person is trapped or under debris of some building collapse? Also, whether the person is live or not, that is an active area of research. Then, an aircraft, can we fully take an image of that aircraft as we take from optical cameras? So, for that, this is required. Now, so if we see various applications, there are basically two types of application one is high power um, or low power, like communication subsurface detection, health checkup for various utilities that requires low power systems. Whereas, there is a thing called nuclear electromagnetic pulse or lightning, electronic warfare, e-bomb etcetera requires 
that whether your electronic system is susceptible to that or not. So, that is called vulnerability testing against electromagnetic pulse that require high power systems. Actually, basically the second thing high power systems that was a cold war time uh, thing. So, that time while trying to uh, answer these questions or trying to develop these systems, people came out with the high power uh, develop these systems and uh, on developing that system actually came the high power UWB uh, antennas, but low power is a more you see civilian type of need or internal security type of need and it is now those applications are coming up and people have also come up with low power UWB uh, things. So, question is that to have this uh, cater to this technology we need antennas. Now, both high and low power systems require UWB antennas at micro frequency with more than 100 percent bandwidth. That means, if micro frequency typically you can say 10 gigahertz. So, that means, I require a bandwidth of 10 gigahertz. So, in a 10 gigahertz uh, uh, frequency of operation if I require 10 gigahertz or can it have 20 gigahertz type of bandwidth that means, 200 percent bandwidth the answer is fortunately yes people have come up with such type of things may not be 200 percent, but very close to 200 percent that we will show today. Now, first we will see the high power UWB antennas. The first one was developed in 1995, it was developed by three scientists Carl Baum, D. V. Giri and Everett Farr. Actually, it was uh, developed at Air Force Research Laboratory Cartland AFB, New Mexico and Protec is a firm which supplied that, but that whole design etcetera whole research was carried out for almost tw uh, uh, 20 years and then that culminated in this. So, that is why in um, these three persons they got the John Cruz award, um, award for antenna this antenna development. Actually, this is the first time they have shown that a nanosecond type of pulse non dispersibly can be sensed and this is the picture of the first develop this thing this is called impulse radiating antenna. Now, this is the uh, more clearer view of this. So, you see there is a paraboloid reflector actually there is a this is called some launcher wave launcher and so we will see the this thing scientifically. So, there is an excitation source it is a very high power excitation source it is a pulse excitation then there are these feed arms they actually take that wave and they are actually should carry T m wave they do not allow the wave to the T or T m mode to come because if they come T and T m mode have a cut off. So, they cannot have a wide band characteristic. So, this and then the on parabolic reflector they fall that thing and after that that becomes a plane wave. Also, there are some terminating loads at the ends these are for cutting if any by chance high frequency components uh, undesired components comes to cut that. So, basic building blocks of an IRAR one is a pulsar that they call that pulse source it is a high power pulse. So, then there is a T m wave launcher then there is a reflector you can have any type of reflector, but preferably paraboloids are used and then some terminations. Now, T m wave launcher design options it can be a bent circular cone, it can be coplanar plates, modified coplanar plates or asymptotic conical dipole plates. This is a very modern thing. So, we will see that bent circular cone. So, this also this can launch T m waves or this is coplanar plates, planar plates, but coplanar. Now, this is modified coplanar plate and finally, A C D asymptotic conical dipole feed this is the thing. So, actually conventional IRA was designed from uh, coplanar plates, but it was found out that it has an input impedance of 200 ohm. So, A C D also can give you that, but the beauty of asymptotic conical dipole is that 
it can be amenable so you can make IRA with any input impedance. So, here uh, it is showing that 200 ohm, but this is the comparison and it can be proved that this ACD fed uh, things that gives a better gain also. This is a return loss you see typically 10 dB is the impedance bandwidth and this is the electric field how it looks like for a given very nanosecond type of a thing. Then this is the gain. So, the ACD fed that is better compared to a slightly better. Now, IRA basically needs a balance typically because the conventional IRA that was designed that has an impedance of 200 ohm. Now, pulse generators generally you know electronics industry produces generators with 50 ohm. So, also pulse generators are single ended. So, getting a 200 ohm line is difficult. So, a 200 ohm to 50 ohm balloon needs to be added and also any balloon will produce some power loss which is undesired. So, the question was that people have modified the IRA so that the balloon is not required. So, you see that with ACD you can design a 100 ohm impedance also. Similarly, now if you have a uh, ground plane and if you have half of the IRA that is called HERA half impulse radiating antenna then to get rid of balloon you can use this. So, 50 ohm to 100 ohm impedance can be achieved from this. This is a half uh, HERA this is its input impedance. So, you see 100 to 50 ohm it is varying certain times it is going even below 50 ohm, but this is good with the thing and this is the excitation if you give an excitation of this, this is the measured voltage at a distance. So, you see that faithfully it is reproducing this there is no dispersion here and this is the impulse response of the HERA. So, this is all IRAs etcetera requires this. So, very low ringing and you see that successfully it is giving a good impulse response that means, if you give an impulse it gives. Now, you can say that impulse is one sided, but why there are two actually that will always come because actually in the far field the uh, while the uh, web is getting launched the there is a direct return that gives you this one negative side, but with that this positive side is enough to say that there is an impulse present. Now, these are the various terminators you can have metal film resistors or you can have carbon composition resistors etcetera. So, that was about uh, high power thing. Now, low power UWB you see one typical application of low power things are making ground penetrating radar which all the applications I have said about this except communication they can be done. So, various options are there, there are printed monopoles rugby ball antenna, then there were Vivaldi antennas, there were bow tie antennas etcetera. So, we will see them. So, what is the requirements of a GPR antenna? Actually it requires ultra wide bandwidth because any range resolution is a inversely proportional to the bandwidth. So, greater you get the bandwidth you get the resolution. So, get very fine resolution we want UWB type of bandwidth at 10 gigahertz etcetera type of then also GPR wants low frequency operation because it needs to penetrate the ground, ground or any material wall etcetera. So, for that it also should have a low frequency uh, up to the FL that should be quite low typically in the order of megahertz 300, 400 megahertz like that. Then also it should have high front to back ratio that means, back lobe should be reduced because GPR always see below the ground. So, why unnecessarily power should be there in the thing and also if any gain is obviously, better gain means power requirement will be less or more range in the ground. So, these are the four requirements of any low power GPR type of antenna. So, there are comparison of GPR antennas one is TM horn uh, it is a simple horn P point is it is also gives a non dispersive thing it has a good directivity, but 
problem is its size is very big spiral antenna we have already uh, discussed about this it is dispersive that is why it creates problem impulse radiating antenna also sometimes for this low type uh, applications may be used, but again the <coughs> problem is that its size is quite big. <coughs> so, then there are tapered slot antenna which is commonly called Vivaldi antenna. It has good both side directivity and low side lobe level, but its problem is its radiation is n fire. That means, maximum uh, radiation takes place in the n fire direction. So, in some applications it creates problem because then the size of the thing becomes quite large. Also, it is also non dispersive it is ultra wideband. Then there are various types of planar monopoles and dipoles, the, but sometimes they become dispersive etcetera. Now, let us say one of the antenna rugby ball monopole antenna its bandwidth you see 0.3 gigahertz to 2.5 gigahertz and fractional bandwidth from that definition if we calculate it gives 157 percent bandwidth. Its uh, polarization is linear directivity is omnidirectional. This is the impedance bandwidth you see from 0.3 to 0.2.5 it is working. Another option is boat I antenna actually this type of this is a dipole from that actually people have modified this and then put some resistive loading to cut off various high frequency undesired things. Then there are instead of loading at the lumped ones people have also loaded here. So, this is one in civil engineering various applications like health checkup of various buildings infrastructure health this antenna is used. Now, there is also one RC loaded boat eye antenna. So, in the uh, in this one this is a planar one the RC loading is kept inside the um, antenna's uh, conducting plane itself. Its bandwidth is 0 0.3 to 3 gigahertz fractional bandwidth compared to the previous one 163 percent you can see this is the graph. Also if you give a input signal like this this one gives you signal like this as I said always you see if you give an impulse it will have this double sided thing that is typical of any antenna because antenna in the far field actually puts derivative. So, there are one signal is going up another signal is going out. So, if you take the derivative you will always get this positive peak and negative peak. Now, this this is a fabricated RC boat eye antenna looks like and this is the simulated results for it is S 1 1 this is the realized gain that uh, things. Finally, also you can put some lenses to better the back lobe radiations. So, this lens design is again from the surface equivalence principle that we have seen and so this is a uh, people are nowadays using metamaterial lens. Metamaterial as a property actually metamaterial means which does not exist actually for metamaterials out of mu or epsilon that means the permittivity and permeability one of them is negative that gives us various properties which are not found in uh, existing material. So, it is a planar array of some cells it is a periodic structure one cell looks like this and then if you have. So, you see the this back sorry this back one the um, this there are two, uh, this this is the antenna plane and there is a lens in a different plane. So, this is the model. So, RC bow tie with metamaterial lens this together makes an antenna it gives various improved properties and so you see that with return loss is measured return loss you can see that within 10 dB starting from here to here up to 3 gigahertz that means impedance bandwidth is 0 0.3 to 3 gigahertz quite good. Then front to back ratio you see with lens and without lens is shown here. So, front to back ratio maximum is 15.39 dB that means, it is cutting the back radiation by 15.39 dB at 1.46 gigahertz and better than that of without lens at all frequencies. So, 
putting the lens helps that front to back ratio is improved and both side gain you see gain maximum with lens is 11.52 dB this is quite significant for a uh, GPR antenna and gain max without lens is 6.45 dB. So, at least 5 dB improvement in the gain at frequencies above 1 2 gigahertz was given by the lens. Then, then people came up with another thing that instead of RC loading if you load with a loop. So, this is a loop what I call. So, evaluation of loop that these were loadings this is suppose the actual antenna and you are loading like this. So, if you consider that these two if you join it becomes something like this. So, this is a bow tie antenna loaded with a loop. So, this is the fabricated antenna these are some results and the radiation pattern. Now, one of the thing is all these UWB uh, antennas they had one problem uh, before all these modern antennas came that at lower frequencies they are always having both side uh, maximum radiation, but after certain frequency they start tilting the main beam starts tilting, but this one you see that there is no tilting in the uh, throughout the whole band there is no tilting. Now, that makes actually whatever impedance bandwidth was giving the whole bandwidth was not usable for UWB antennas that is why there is a term called useful bandwidth. So, it turned out that all the planar antennas UWB planar antennas were suffering from this. Now, this one seems that it can it has uh, make that and also you can put some directors you see instead of one there are more loops. So, that gives a director sort of thing. So, this is a fabricated antenna uh, loop loaded bow tie these are the various design parameters and this is the width directors this is the radiation pattern. You see the radiation pattern is changing at various frequencies, but the maximum uh, radiation is always at the both side. So, that makes it that that is why you see here uh, it is listed that various contender for this bow tie antenna the uh, bandwidth you see that 10 is to 1 is typical 10 is to 1 means if you have a 500 megahertz then your low FL is 500 and the your F H is 10 times that that means 5 gigahertz. So, that but unfortunately that RC loaded bow tie that has a useful bandwidth 4 is to 1 because up that means after 2 gigahertz the beam will start tilting. Now, you see other uh, things also uh, people have come up various these are various references. So, where people have come up people have gone to 250 megahertz, but you see 3 is to 1 was the bandwidth and also size is a factor because for these systems the smaller size is good. So, RC bow tie uh, can give you 10 is to 1 that has been improved to 5 is to 1, but then if you put the lens then that becomes 5 is to 1 becomes 7 is to 1. You see other things are more or less same, but loop bow tie you see 500 megahertz this 10 is to 1 has been changed to 11 is to 1. That means, the bandwidth is increasing and loop bow tie plus directors you see it is going lower and also 13 is to 1 this is the best till now achieved and also the usable bandwidth is full this impedance bandwidth. So, that is a remarkable improvement and this is a very good GPR antenna. So, uh, hopefully uh, this will have a lot of applications in future. So, with this uh, we have seen that various UWB antennas they are various characteristic how to make that and this is an active area of research hopefully people will come up with better and better antennas after this. So, with this this UWB antennas we have shown that you can have uh, by giving the picture that you are giving a pulse excitation very narrow pulses of picosecond duration, but you are also getting the uh, radiated signal is also like that. Uh, so, there is no dis dispersion there. So, these are promising things hopefully uh, you people also will have better such antenna design, but basics 
whatever we have seen that helps you to design this type of antennas. So, we conclude this lecture here. In the next lecture, we will see what is the how to measure various antennas characteristics. So, antenna measurements we will concentrate there. Thank you.